Hey, welcome back. Today we're talking about chapter 5, speaking the truth in love. Uh, Ephesians 4, verse 15, this is the premise of the entire book. Listen to this. Paul says, Instead, we are to speak the truth in love. In this way, we will grow to become in every respect a mature body of Jesus, who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So he mentions before this that God gives these gifts to the body of Christ, the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, uh, the evangelist, and, um, and he talks about these roles being there to equip us for the work of the ministry. And then he's kind of commenting on this idea of ministering one to another. And he says, we will speak truth in love. And he prefaces that by saying, instead. Well, what comes before instead? We will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves blown here and there by every wind of teaching and the cunning and craftiness of pe people with, with deceitful scheming. So here's the thing. In our culture, uh, we're going to constantly hear of new fads, new things, new uh, religions, and even new beliefs within Christianity. So why is it important that we speak the truth in love? Well, number one, love helps it be received, right? Uh, love helps it be understood. I'm going to tell you a story about how important it is and how helpful it is when we speak the truth in love one to another. I remember I was about uh, two years into marriage and uh, one of my sisters, she uh, just pulled me aside one day, we were, she was visiting, and she said, hey, you know what? I think you're kind of hurting Danielle's feelings uh, when, you, when you're uh, making fun and when you're laughing. I said, oh no, we love to laugh at each other. You know, we laugh at ourselves. We don't take ourselves too seriously. And she's like, well, just ask her. I think you could be hurting your feelings. And I thought, I just blew her off and I thought, no, she's, she's a, you know, Danielle and I's relationship is great. And, um, and, it, and it was a great relationship, great, you know, marriage is going great. But uh, then another sister, <laughs> That maybe they were talking. Another sister mentioned it uh, about two weeks later and said, hey, I have three sisters. She said, hey, I think, you know, when you uh, make fun of Danielle, I don't know if she's, I don't know if she's enjoying all the time. So I asked Danielle, I said, honey, do I ever hurt your feelings when we're just like joking around? She's like, kind of. And I was like, oh man, I couldn't believe it uh, because here's the truth. I needed to hear somebody confront me that I was doing something wrong. Now, I love to laugh, uh, but I was accidentally doing it at the expense of my wife. And so I needed to learn that lesson, that it's okay to make fun of me, but not to make fun of others, even if it's my wife. Uh, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, so I needed to learn that lesson. I'm thankful that my sisters loved me enough to tell me that, right? Uh, so let's talk about this idea of blind spots, because we all have them. You know. Cars these days have blind spot technology, right? So when I was 16, uh, way back in the day, it was like, like 99, I guess, um, there was not blind spot technology. You'd be driving and you'd be merging and all of a sudden, you know, you almost hit somebody. Why? Because you can see in the rear view mirror, right? Um, back a good ways, 20, 25 feet, but there's this kind of 10 to 20 foot window to your immediate left, your immediate right, that when you're driving, you can't see. Right? So this was this ongoing problem. So now Honda and these other, other uh, automotive uh, companies made blind spot technology, put a little camera there so you can see it. Well, we have blind spots in our lives that you will undoubtedly not see unless, number one, you put yourself in a relationship where someone can speak to you, and number two, you're receptive for when they speak to you. Now here's the other side of this. Are you willing to love someone enough to give them the truth? This chapter is about speaking the truth in love. Let me read this again. We are to speak the truth in love. And in this way, we will grow in every respect more like Jesus, who is the head. And isn't that our goal? That we become more like Jesus. But here's the thing. I need you to help me be more like Jesus. You need me. You need the person next to you. You need the other person on the other side of you. You need your spouse. You need your cousin. You need your pastor. You need people to help you become more like Jesus. If you feel that you can 
mature and become like Jesus all on your own, you're missing a big part of the heart of God. God has always wanted a family. And in the Bible, we see God tell us about this idea of, of togetherness, that we are one body, we're knit together, that we're one body, many parts, and that we need one another. And so I just wanna encourage you um, to, to speak the truth in love to someone. If you love someone, and they're doing something that you know is inhibiting their relationship with God, then you'll love them enough to tell them the truth. I wanna say that again. If you know someone, especially a friend, someone you're in relationship with, and there's something in their life that is stopping them from communion with God or nearness to God, if you love them, you'll tell them. I've had a few very difficult moments with very good friends where I sat down with them and just said, hey, the way that such and such and such is happening, I don't know if it's honoring to God. What do you think, you know? And, I, and I'm telling you this because I love you, because I care about your future, because I care about your family, because I care about your relationship with God. You see, if you love someone, you'll tell them the truth. So what I'd like you to do maybe in your groups is to get really vulnerable, really honest today and to say, you know what, here's a time in my life when someone loved me enough to tell me the truth. Here's a time in my life when my pastor pulled me aside and in private and in love shared with me something that was going on in my life that just was not right. Here's a time when my best friend hurt my feelings but told me the truth. You know, Proverbs says, wounds from a friend are better than kisses from an enemy. And what that means is that there's gonna be times in your life when a friend loves you enough to tell you something that you need to hear. And there's gonna be times in your life when you have a friend who needs to hear the truth, even if it feels like a wound. Now you should never do that publicly. You know, I love what one of my mentors said when I was in Bible college, you reward in public, you rebuke in private. So if you uh, rebuke someone, if you bring, if you, if you bring a, something to the attention of someone, uh, Christian brother or sister, do that privately. Do that on your own. Take, take uh, Matthew 18 to heart, right? Matthew 18 tells us that we're to go alone, share with them what's on our heart, and then uh, if it doesn't work, maybe go with another believer. And if it really is a big deal that's causing a lot of dissension and just problems, then go to your pastor. But whatever you do, don't ignore it. Because if you love someone, you'll tell them the truth. One of my favorite quotes is from Martin Luther King Jr. who said, there comes a time in every man's life when he must do what is neither popular nor politic, but he must do what is right just because it's right. I wanna read Ephesians 4.25 to you. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood, speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. You see, we need each other. And I wanna encourage you Christians, friends, listen, if your pastor tells you something and it's in love and he's pointing out something that you're doing that's not quite right, not quite helpful to the kingdom or loving to your spouse or honoring to your children, instead of getting angry, instead of leaving the church, take a few days to stop and just pray about it and say, Lord, do I need to hear this? Do I need this correction? Because you know what 1 John tells us? God is a Father who loves us enough to correct us. If you're being corrected by the God, if He's convicting your heart, that means you're in a relationship with Him. If you're being convicted, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It means you're a child. So that's pretty neat. That if we're, if we're being corrected, if we're being convicted of something, that a little course correction that could take place in our lives and how better we could please God, that's because He loves us and we need each other. If you're reading the book, Truth and Love, together, at the end of this chapter, uh, chapter five, there's five or six questions like there is on every chapter, helping you discuss as a group how best to apply uh, these concepts and these scriptures. So here's a couple questions for you. Have I ever swept something under the rug because I was afraid to confront my friend about it? Number two, what does God's word teach us about these sticky situations that involve conflict? And I'd like one of you to read Matthew 18. Number three, how do we take God's word to our heart and God's heart to our words? Is it helpful or harmful 
to just speak the truth not in love, in anger, in a condescending way. You see, because I've seen that happen many times. That's not what God instructs us to do. Jesus gives us the example and God instructs us to speak the truth in love and grace. Number four, when someone corrects me, how should I respond? Number five, has there been a time when we were corrected by a pastor or a good friend and looking back, we're really thankful they had the courage to talk to us? And number six, is there someone in my past that I need to forgive? How can I be intentional about forgiving them? You know, again, this, this book, the whole, uh, the whole heart of, of me writing this book is to get believers like you and me to come to a place instead of just agreeing with Scripture, where we start applying it. And when we start to speak the truth in love, that's when we become more and more like Jesus and unified in Him.